So I'm constantly moving around on top of him. When he tries to make an escape, I adjust my pinning strategy. I don't just sit there with a single pin. I'm constantly moving from knee wedges to knee blocks, to elbow wedges, to elbow blocks, cross faces, reverse cross faces, to compensate for his escape attempt. Now, let's look at another position, north-south. Oh, that was, that was the, uh, a lot of the vague stuff. I'm gonna try to cruise through some of these uh, other topics now. North-south, I can be in double over position where I'm over ants, two arms and elbows. This gives me a great ability to attack, but very poor control. I can use this overhook, which is also a far side overhook from side control, right when I'm here, and I pump, punch in this far side overhook. That's the same overhook that we have from north-south. So the far side overhook from side control and the north-south overhook are the same tool, essentially. Except one's from side control, one's from north-south. Now from here I can use this to start to drive this elbow up. I can attack and submit this arm. If, I have, if I'm over on the other side, I can do the same thing on the other side. So I can attack both arms. So my attacking potential is very good from over-under. Unfortunately, my control is terrible. Because Ant can use his elbows to make space and bring those knees inside. So you have terrible control from over positions because his elbows are between me and you, or me and him. The only overhooks that are, um, they're not necessarily great, but if I'm here and his elbows aren't in and I'm like this, now I can punch his arms up toward the ceiling and pull his, pull his uh, hips down toward his heels and start to escape that way. So you're not great with control when you're going over, but your attacks are great. We can go with one of each. Or let's go with book double under first, I guess. We'll go with double under. Here, double unders, my control is great. If Ant wants to escape with you know, his overhead elbow escape or whatever, it's very hard because Ant's elbows are shut out to the outside position because I have the underhooks. However, my ability to attack him is, is limited. So great for control with double unders, but not great for attacking. There are some attacks you can do. You can scoop this elbow and you can go into overhook arm locks attack and break the arm this way, that'll work. Uh, but that's pretty much your only option. So double unders like this is not great for, for attacking, but it's very good for control. So I'm gonna recommend that you work with one of each. Working with one of each is a great balance between the two. I'm gonna go under one side and over the other. So now when Ant tries to elbow escape, he's only got the one elbow, it's hard. Okay, but at the same time, even though it's hard for him to escape, I still have good ways to start punching in that north-south overhook or the far side overhook and getting into my attacks. And now I can start using this to go on and work towards submission. One more thing I can do with my upper body. So on the upper body, we have double overs. We have over-under, one of each. And we have double unders, where both are inside. The last thing we have, I usually do this after I go from double overs here. If I feel like he's pressuring his elbows up into me and I feel like I'm losing control and I feel like those knees are going to come in, as soon as I feel my chest be coming off of his chest, I put my shoulder down in the hip and I use a far hip shoulder wedge. Far hip, the hip further from my hips, and I use my shoulders a wedge. So now when he tries to bring his knees inside, even with his uh, elbow frames, there's not enough space on the hips for his knees to come inside because my shoulder's wedging the pocket of the hips. Our lower body configurations. So I'll work with over-under like I'm recommending you do. We can be sprawled where my hips control his head, okay? From here, my movement is very limited. I can't move very well. However, I can get good pressure on the head. We can play from a kneeling position. From here, I can use my knees to wedge the head a little bit so I can get some head wedging effects going on. And I still have some movement. I still have some mobility if I need to. We can also play with our knees off the floor. We can play up in a tripod. From here, I have no wedging effect on the head. I can't wedge the head in quite the same way. 
but I have good uh, movement. If I need to, I can move around the body very quickly. Okay, so sprawling, kneeling, and tripoding. Last but not least, if we go up into a tripod and Ant starts doing that escape where he puts his hands in my hips and he tries to put hooks in. Yes, that one. Yep, go back. When I feel this going on, go ahead. I sit through with my hips. If my hips are up like this, he can start getting his hooks in. And that's gonna start, he'll start taking my back. So as soon as I feel him pushing in my hips, and my hips are put, being pushed up in a way, and I see those feet coming, I feel those feet coming, I sit through toward the hips to avoid his ability to, uh, um, to re-guard. And now from here, I could look at starting to come up, put, punching in overhooks and attacking. Setting up these arm bars like I talked about, etc. So that's north-south. We had the upper body configurations, which are double over, double under. Double over is great attacking, poor control. Double under, good control, poor attacking. Over under, which is the best of both worlds, a little control, a little attacking. And then if I've lost the, the fight for upper body inside position, I can use my shoulder to wedge inside the hips to just stop his knees from coming back in. That's purely defensive. Then our lower body, we can be heavy with our hips and sprawl. We can be on our knees, or we can tripod. So we have different heights, low, middle, high. And if he tries to put his feet in his hooks, sit your hips through to avoid that back tape. Now, the third side thing that we haven't talked about yet, and this one probably has the least amount of information at all to, to understand in some, in some regards, and that's knee mount. Knee mount is not, a, is not a pin in the normal sense. It's not a pin in the way that I can sit and pin him down for minutes at a time and stop him from moving, okay? Knee mount is a floating pin. If I, if I come here and I ask Ant to explode out of this pin, very hard. If I go here and I ask Ant to explode out of this pin, it's not a very stable pin. So the knee mount is more of a position that I use one as a transition to mount, as a way to set up my transitions to the mount position, or as kind of a touch and go pin where I'm just looking to create defensive responses in my opponent. Okay? where maybe I put this, he puts his hand on my knee and now I can start grabbing the wrist and going for Kimura's here. He puts his hand on my knee, I can start underhooking, pulling this arm up, stepping around for arm bars here. So understand that the knee mount is not a pin that you're gonna hold for long periods of time. It is a pin that you are doing to either get to the mount and improve your position or if your opponent defends the knee mount by putting hands on the knee, then you stop working toward the mount and you start working toward submission by uh, attacking and, and, and taking that arm. So I'm here. Maybe I use an elbow wedge to clear the way. So if he tries to keep his knees to his chest, I can use that elbow to clear away from my knee. I come up. Now if he does nothing, I can slide across and start taking the mount. If I put my knee up and he starts defending, I can use that to start going into my attacks. Okay. So we've seen side control, we've seen north south, and we've seen knee mount, our three side pins. Now let's start looking at how to transition between all those side pins. Now that you know how to hold them and maintain them, let's look at transitioning between them. First, let's look at side control to knee mount. Very simple. I'm here. If I just try to pop up to knee mount and Ant keeps his knees tight to my body, to his ribs, and I, and I try to pop up to knee mount, those knees are going to come right in and I'm going to lose position. So what I like to do before I transition to knee mount is I like to use my left arm to help me clear the way. Either a near hip elbow block or a near hip elbow wedge or a combination of the two. Now when Ant tries to keep his knees up for, for an elbow escape, my knee will I'm sorry, my elbow will clear the way from my knee and I can come up into a knee mount. So that's transitioning from side control to knee mount. The big thing is we don't want this knee to come in. So I use my arms and my knee 
my action arm and my mounting leg to play defense in the pocket of the hips while I transition up to knee mount. If I need to, and he's trying to be tight with this, let's say I can't get this arm in, I cannot, so like I said, scrape my knee up until my knee peeks through the pocket of the hip. So I could be through like this. He's got that knee tight. I could come in with the pocket on my knee just like so. And I could transition and knee mount just like so. One knee on the stomach, one knee off the mat. If this knee's on the mat, it's not knee mount. You won't score with this. This knee's got to be up. Side control to north south. Now, because I'm going to north south, my cross face arm has to come across. So I'm going to go from a cross face to either a reverse cross face or a far side overhook or a reverse underhook. One of those three. Reverse cross face and a near hip elbow block. And I can come to north south. I can go with a far side overhook and a near hip elbow block. Or I can go with a, a, a far side, or I'm sorry, a reverse underhook and a near hip elbow block. And that will set me up for transitions into, nor into the north south position. If I go to a reverse underhook, I end up with an underhook in north south. If I use a far side overhook, I end up with an overhook from north south. So we saw a side control to knee mount, side control to north south. Let's do side control to, the, to side control. This can be reactive or it can be proactive. It's reactive if he starts coming up on an underhook escape. If I'm here and he starts underhook escaping, I put on a wizard and a near hip, I guess hand block, near hip hand block. I step over. Now I replace my left arm with my right arm. So my left arm is shutting out his legs right now. I replace my right arm, so my right arm shuts out the legs. And I back set. And I end up on the far side. So that's reactive. That was a reactive method where he started to force his way up to an underhook escape. I can, although, I can also do this proactively. I'm here. I put on a near hip elbow block. And I use my cross face arm as a far side overhook. Now, from this far side overhook, I start to walk over to north-south, and I drive my overhook across his body, putting all my weight onto the elbow, and I force him to look away. And now I can have the side control on the far side. Why would I do that? Well, maybe my opponent happens to be very good at escapes on one side of the body, and he sucks at escapes on the other side. Maybe I'm better at attacking on one side of the body. Maybe I have a pass guard over here, but most of my best submission attacks are done from the other side. So that might be another incentive why I may proactively make it a point to force side control on the other side. So that's going from our side control positions to all of our other positions. Let's look at um, knee mount to side. Let's look at our knee mounts. I can start in the knee mount position. If I want to go knee mount to side control, we have the same problem just in reverse. Remember, when I was trying to go from side control to knee mount, the problem was this knee. When I go from knee mount to side control, if I do, the, if I do this in a really lazy way, I'm going to let that knee come in and he's going to be gone. So typically when I start to come out of uh, knee mount, I prefer to take my action arm and put it here as a near hip elbow block. So now as I start to come down, as Ant tries to elbow escape, my near hip elbow block with the action arm keeps his legs out. And I can settle down into a reverse cross face with a near hip elbow block. That was knee mount to side control. Let's see knee mount to, to knee mount. I can do this two ways. I can either go over the hips with a windshield wiper transition, or I can go over the head with a top spin. If I'm here and Ant starts to turn into me, I can bring my second knee to my, to my initial knee, and now I'm gonna windshield wipe my feet from the, uh, from the right side of the body here to the left side of the body. 
and I can come out on knee mount on this side. If he turns up into me this side, I can do the same thing. Hands in, knee to knee, transition the feet, and we're back to knee mount on this side. Another way I can do this is, is with a top spin. He turns into me. Rather than going knee to knee here, I can step over the head and I can go to knee, and I can go to knee, knee to knee this way. Now with knee to knee this way, I make a switch to my left knee, to my right knee, my back step, and I'm on knee mount on this side. One more time, he turns into me. Rather than going knee to knee like this, like we did in the windshield wiper, I step over the head and I go knee to knee. Now I back step and I have knee mount. Knee mount to north-south, very similar to knee mount to side control. The problem is the knees are going to come in. If I'm in here and he's got his defensive frames up and such and I just try to run to north-south and he escapes, there's going to be too much space, his knees are going to come in. So I'm here. If I want to go north south, I drop to my near elbow, I'm sorry, my near hip elbow block. Go ahead. He escapes. I bring everything low. And I land here with a near hip elbow block and a reverse cross face. So that's knee mount to north south. Last but not least, let's look at north south or starting from north south and transitioning to our other three positions. First, north-south to north-south. This one's going to sound a little silly, but just bear with me. In north-south, I want my hips on one side of the center line, and I want my head on the other. Okay? If this ever changes, if Ant is able to maybe push his, hip, push his head to the other side of my legs, this is a problem. My head and my, le and my hips are on the same side of his body. So I make a transition from one side of north-south just to the other by moving my head. Excellent. Now let's say the opposite ha happens. Let's say I'm here and Ant maybe, I don't know uh, how, but uses this arm to shove my head to the other side of his hips. Maybe uses his hip. And I end up here. I can bring my hips across to the other side. And I end up once again with my hips on one side and my head on the other. So I always want hips on one side and head on the other. If he ever does anything to challenge that and puts my head and my hips on the same side, I need to move either my head or my hips to the other side so I once again have head, head, head on one side and hips on the other. Uh, North-south to side control. I'm here in north-south. Now the thing is, I can't just throw this arm over and start coming around to side control because as I do so, if I leave too much space, he's going to escape. So how do you think I'm going to stop his knees from coming in as I transition from north-south around to side control? Do you have any ideas there? Close to hip. Yeah, we're going to wedge into the hip. Exactly. I'm going to be here. If I start to feel like he's going to uh, escape or, or start to elbow escape, maybe overhead, I put a wedge, an elbow wedge in the pocket of the hip. Now, if I feel like his left knee is going to come inside my elbow, I connect my left knee to my left elbow here. And I can come back to my side control with a near hip knee wedge. North-south to, to knee mount is very much the same thing. I'm here, he starts escaping. I feel like those knees are going to come in. I put in a, an elbow wedge across the hip. He tries to bring his knee inside my elbow. I connect my left knee to my left elbow. And I just settle into a knee mount position just like so. Now from knee mount, I could either wedge the far hip with my elbow for a V mount. I could drive my left knee all the way through across the hip line for a shin mount. I could sit here and wait for him to try to escape to lead me into submissions, or I could transition from knee mount back down to side control. So there you guys have it. I know that was a lot of information in one video. Um, hopefully not too complicated. Again, everything always came back to the same two directives. Stay inside the knees and control the hips. 
we saw elbow wedges, knee wedges, elbow blocks, knee, knee blocks. Um, we saw V mount and shin mount and, and all sorts of ways that we can keep control of across the pockets of the hips to keep their legs shut out. That's directive number one. Another important directive to stop their escapes and to work towards submission. Number two, get inside their elbows and control their head and shoulders. Getting inside the elbows and controlling the pocket of the shoulder here and the head. That's gonna be how you guys work your way in towards submissions. First you get by the lower body, you shut the lower body out by controlling the pockets of the hips with the elbow wedges, knee wedges, and all that stuff. And then when possible, we want to work our way from the hips to the upper body, to the head and shoulders, making that cranial shift. And as we do that, we're always monitoring the hips and we're trying to work our way inside the elbows. Once we're inside the elbows, we can shut out their elbow escapes and we can start isolating limbs and working towards submission. I showed you guys how I use my body to control the head, how I use my arms to block out their legs, how I use my mounting leg, how I use my pummeling leg. And then once we showed you guys how to hold the side control, we showed you how to hold north-south with double overs, double unders, with over-under, with the shoulder wedge and the hip. And then we showed you how we use knee mount as either a staging position to go to the mount or as a touch and go position to de elicit defensive reactions among my opponents. And I can use those defensive reactions to go into my submissions or get better control. And then you guys learn how to transition from and between all the positions. You went from side control to side control. You went from side control to north-south. You went from side control to knee on belly. You went from knee mount to knee mount. You went from knee mount to side control. You went from knee mount to north-south. You went from north-south to north-south. You went from north-south to side control. You went from north-south to knee mount. So you guys know how to hold all the three different side pin variations. And you guys know how to transition between those three. Now make sure you guys come up, uh, continue coming classes if you go look in the future when we start looking at adding in straddle pins. Now we're going to start looking at moving from our side pins into our straddle pins. We're going to look at how to hold our straddle pins and maintain and transition between our straddle pins. And then finally we're going to look at how to transition from our straddle pins back into side pins if we need to. Right? And by the time we go through all that you should have a complete dynamic pinning system in place so hopefully your opponents never escape and never get back to guard on you. Thanks for watching guys.